Let me quickly talk to you about how to initiate an Equifax dispute process. Don't go anywhere. You're going to love today's conversation. I guarantee it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sort of Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you ever ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka. Now, let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to talk to you about how to initiate an Equifax dispute process. The first thing you need to do, you need to check your report. You need to check your Equifax report, but not just your Equifax report. You want to check all three credit bureaus. This is important because checking your report will help you spot information that may be inaccurate or incomplete, right? And uh, one thing you need to understand is that once a year, Congress has mandated that you receive a free copy of your credit reports from Equifax, from Experian, and TransUnion. And you have to go to a website called uh, annualcreditreport.com. Okay, and this is kind of cool because a credit report is basically a summary of your unique financial history, right? And uh, Equifax, TransUnion, and uh, Experian will have to give that to you. The reason why you want to check your all three is because sometimes there might be uh, differences in terms of credit report data, but also credit, credit score. And you want to see if the data is consistent across all three credit bureaus or not. Okay, it's important. And your credit report includes important information about you, including personal information, right? I'm speaking about your name, social security number, if you have your current and former addresses, and in some cases, your current and former employ employers. It has account information. I'm talking about payment history, account balances and limits, and dates the accounts were opened or closed, bankruptcies and accounts and collections, as well as inquiries, you know. And uh, if you, as you look at your credit report, you wanna keep the following in mind. In the personal information section of your credit report, is your name listed accurately and your address up to date? Very important criterion here. And in the account information portion of uh, your credit report, are the accounts listed complete and accurate? And if the, any of the information is inaccurate or incomplete, it is important to contact the lender or creditor that issued the account. And then you can contact Equifax or TransUnion or, uh, or uh, Experian, okay? So the bottom line is that the first thing you need to do, you need to check your Equifax reports. And while you are doing it, also take the time to check your TransUnion and Experian report just to make sure that information is in harmony. Every information is uh, aligned across all three credit bureaus. Step number two, you want to think like a lender. You have to, you have to understand when a lender looks at your uh, credit report, he or she thinks differently. Obviously, I've said this before, a credit report is a synopsis of your financial history, okay? But the lender looks at, they pay attention to particular items, particular criteria when uh, when making, when thinking about whether it's to grant you a loan or a credit card, okay? So this is why it's important to check your credit reports regularly to ensure the information is accurate and complete. So a potential lender, they will use your, your credit report as one item out of many. They'll look at your DTI. They'll look at your credit utilization ratio. They, they will look at uh, how often you pay your bills, your payment history. This is important for them, right? Because if they're going to, gr to grant you a new credit card or if they're going to grant you a loan, they want to make sure that you have been great in terms of paying back your credit in the past. So your Equifax credit report contains the following types of information. You have identified information. Okay, so this section of your Equifax credit report includes personal information, such as your name, address, social, and date of birth. The identified information contained in your Equifax credit report is not used to calculate credit scores. Then you have credit account information. So the information is reported to Equifax by your lenders and creditors and includes the types of accounts, for example, a credit card, mortgage, student loan, or vehicle loan, the date those accounts were open, your credit limits or loan amounts, account balances, and your payment history. And this section may also con may not contain all your credit accounts for several reasons, such as closed account they have they have dropped off your report after a certain period of time, or accounts not reported to Equifax by lenders. 
you also have the inquiry information okay there are two types of inquiries soft and hard so soft inquiries may result from your checking your own credit reports companies extending you pre-approval offers of credit or insurance or your current lenders and creditors conducting periodic reviews of your accounts known as account reviews okay soft inquiries do not impact credit scores and regularly checking your credit reports can help you monitor your credit accounts and enable you to recognize inaccurate or incomplete information or even uh, better suspicious activity that may signal potential identity theft and hard inquiries occur when companies or individuals such as credit card companies or loan services review your Equifax credit report because they, you have applied for credit or, or a service. For example, a new loan, a credit card, or a mobile phone contract. And hard inquiries remain on your Equifax credit report for up to two years and they may adversely impact credit scores, okay? Although the impact may lessen with time. And the lenders will also pay attention to bankruptcies. So your Equifax credit report contains information about bankruptcy, public records, and related details such as the filing date and chapter type of bankruptcy, okay? And also collection accounts. So this includes past due accounts that have um, been turned over to a collection agency. And this can include your credit accounts as well as accounts with doctors, hospitals, banks, retail stores, you name it, cable companies or mobile phone providers. So you may also want to check your Equifax credit report if you're planning a big purchase, such as a car or a home. So doing so can help you understand what lenders and creditors may see when you apply for credit. Step number three. So after you check your report and start thinking like a lender, you want to file a dispute. It's important now. You can file a dispute for free. So if you see information on your Equifax credit report that you believe is inaccurate or incomplete, simply file a dispute and uh, Equifax will actually look into things right away. So how does how does the whole dispute process work? So if you submit a dispute to one of the three nationwide credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, they may update your credit report based on the documents and information you provide. For example, submitting a marriage certificate for an change name change for example will work okay one thing you need to understand is before you contact uh, Equifax make sure that you have all the data that you need to back to back up the request if you believe that information is inaccurate or incomplete you want to submit the proof the evidence that will actually convince Equifax to say okay you were right and they will they will update their records okay if you contact the lender or creditor the company will investigate and send you the results of in its investigation directly. It will also notify credit bureaus such as Equifax of any changes that need to be made to your credit reports as a result of the, the investigation. What I'm trying to say here is that there are some data, there are some uh, data points that you need to change with the lender or credit card issuer. And there are some data points that you need to change only with Equifax. So for example, if there's anything wrong with the uh, Let's say with your, if you have an issue, if you have a problem with the, your credit card balance or your credit card accounts in general, contact the issuer first. But if you have a, a situation where you want just you just want to change your name, then you can contact Equifax directly. Okay, and if you submit a dispute with uh, Equifax, Equifax may on your behalf contact the lender or creditor from which it received the disputed information. Okay, and you can and they can supply them with, with the information and any supporting documents you provided with your dispute and instruct the lender or creditor to investigate your dispute. So the cool thing here is that you can you can contact the lender or issuer directly and uh, if they don't respond to you, if they're too if they're just dragging your feet, if they're dragging their feet, then you can just contact Equifax directly. And uh, so so after completing its investigation. The lender or creditor may provide its response along with any information updates to the credit bureau, in this case Equifax, and uh, so that's, re that's really good. And Equifax will then notify you of, of uh, the investigation response within 30 days of your dispute request, okay? So I want you to keep in mind though that you can always request a free copy of your credit report and score once a year because you don't have to pay for it. So please keep that in mind. The fourth step is you need to be specific. So when you're filing a report, when you're filing a dispute with uh, Equifax, the more specific you are, the better, okay? You can dispute any of the following. Personal information. So your name, addresses, 
social security number or date of birth, those you can dispute, no problem. Your, the account information you believe is, is incomplete or inaccurate. For example, if late payments are being reported on one of your accounts, but you have always paid your balance on time and in full, this could be this could cause you to say, you know what, I want to dispute this. If you have mixed credit files, so if someone else's information has been reported on your credit file, you need you can actually dispute it. This may happen if a father and son, let's say senior and junior, have the same name for for instance. Okay, if you have a duplicate reporting of an item. One example might be a debt listed twice. So this is a legit dispute. This is a legit uh, criterion for a dispute and information that may indicate fraud or identity theft. So this would be credit accounts, including collection accounts on your credit report that you don't recognize. So whether you are contacting a lender or the credit bureaus, please provide all the evidence and documents you can to support your dispute, such as an account statement, verifying an account balance, so give details about why you believe the information in the credit report in the Equifax credit report is inaccurate or incomplete. Okay. One thing you need to understand is that there are a few things you need to follow. There are a few, let's say a few steps you need to follow to make sure that Equifax is uh, responsive to your request. Okay. One thing you need to understand is that if you file a dispute with Equifax, you can generally expect to receive the results of your dispute within 30 days because Equifax has to do something. They have to do a, uh, I would say a, a dual, a, a bilateral investigation. So they have to do the investigation in-house first to see in their systems what really they can change. And they have also, they need to contact the lender, the data furnisher, the lender or the credit card issuer to make sure that what you're saying is actually true. Okay. So you want to expect to receive the results of your dispute within 30 days. And if the information is found to be inaccurate, uh, your credit reports will be updated generally within 30 days okay 30 days 15 days 30 days and if you if the result of the investigation finds that the information is accurate it will remain on your credit reports so there's nothing you can do about it please have proof I have said this before, but I, I'm, I'm going to say it again. It's very important to have proof. Now, what documents will you need to provide for your disputes? So when you file, when you file a dispute, you'll need to provide some backup data, some documentation, some paperwork, and what you will need depends on what information you may be disputing. Okay. So here are some examples of the types of documents that Equifax may need copies of during their investigation. Big decision time. Big decision to I want you to think twice here. Are you currently trying to dispute something on your Equifax report? Talk to me about that. Okay. Do you have some uh, proof? Have you thought about just uh, gathering in a, in a folder or somewhere online all the proofs that you need to make sure that your Equifax dispute goes smoothly? Talk to me about that. And this is important. Okay. So if you don't have a uh, proof right now, don't even thinking about, don't even think about starting a dispute. You, things will just uh, no. you want to take time to gather evidence. Okay. So when we talk about anything about personal information, if you're trying to dispute something around per your personal information, uh, proof might include a valid driver's license, a birth certificate, or a copy of a utility bill. If you want to dispute something around your account information, pay attention to having current bank statements with account information, letters from a lender showing an account has been corrected and proof that an account was a result of identity theft. Okay. And if you're trying to change, if you're trying to update other information on your Equifax credit report, make sure that you have, for, for instance, bankruptcy schedules or other court documents, student loan disability letters and cancel checks. Obviously, the list here is not exhaustive, but this has to be done on a case by case basis. So what you want to do is that you want to think first about the item you, you want to correct and you want to think about you can. You know what? The funny, the, the good thing is you can even contact Equifax directly and ask them based on the item that you are trying to dispute. What are the uh, what is the evidence that you should supply to them so that they are comfortable during the investigation process? Yeah. You can basically call them up so you can call them up or you can do some uh, some uh, research online and but yeah 
but and and also the good thing is if Equifax is not reachable, try to contact the other two bureaus. You can contact also TransUnion or um, or um, Experian because if you have wrong data on one report, chances are you might have the same data being reported, being misreported on your on your uh, Experian or TransUnion report as well. I'll be right back. Right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another session of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation about the Equifax dispute process. And step number six, I want you to be patient. This is important, really, really important. And uh, once you have successfully filed your credit dispute, you should expect the following to happen. First, you will receive a confirmation code. So you will receive a 10 digit confirmation code for future reference. And you may check your status and you can check your uh, your status anytime within your your uh, my Equifax account. So the thing here is that the way you actually initiate disputes on Equifax, you're going to have to create a my Equifax accounts. You're going to have to pay for it. Not at all. This is just for tracking purposes. OK, you can have an account with them and uh, you're given you given your private information, your personal information, your name, first name, last name, date of birth and social. And so that you can track your uh, investigation online, you can see what's going on. And this page, the dashboard, once you log in, you will receive updates automatically. Sometimes they might even send you text messages, so SMS notifications. If you if you provide them with your phone number, they will do that as well. Okay. And so once you you have a, a confirmation code, when reviewing your dispute. If Equifax is able to make changes to your credit report based on the information you provided, they will do so. Otherwise, they will con they, they will contact the, the lender, the data furnisher, to make sure that the information that you have provided to them is uh, accurate. Okay, as I said before, the investigation takes 30 days, and Equifax has to contact your bank or your insurance company or the landlord or whatever whoever provided the the data, and they also have to do their own in-house checking and the results are known in 30 days okay within 30 days of your dispute request Equifax will notify you of the results of uh, their dispute investigation or you can even check your your my Equifax accounts and you'll see that you'll see everything big decision time big decision time so have you currently do you currently have a pending Equifax dispute uh, dispute going on and how long have you waited write in the comment section and tell us about your experience it's also important to understand that the 30 day is the maximum limit okay and but this may happen changes may happen within seven days or, or two weeks it depends on the backlog that they have the request backlog that they currently have so there are there are moments there are times when uh, equifax the team is very busy they have a, a huge backlog and there are other times when they're just uh, quote unquote less busy <music> And step number seven this is the last step here you want to review results okay so results will be completed within 30 days and uh, once you get you get the results please review things it's important so if Equifax finds that information on your credit report needs to be updated don't worry they'll take care of it so what steps can you take if you don't agree with the dispute investigation results right because things might not always go the way you want it so you want you want to think about a backup plan here okay so if your dispute does not resolve your concerns and you still believe information on your Equifax credit report is is uh, incomplete or inaccurate you have several options number one you may contact the lender or creditor that reported the information to Equifax and dispute it directly if, if you would like written documentation relating to your account such as an account agreement please contact your lender or creditor okay this is this party is called your the data furnisher so you may file a new dispute and provide additional information or documents to Equifax also. And what will happen here is that Equifax may reinvestigate your dispute with a creditor or lender on your behalf. Okay, but be very careful when you choose this route. Please introduce new evidence. Okay, very important. You may you may request that a consumer statement of 
100 words or less be added to your Equifax credit report, okay? So your statement should be specific to your dispute. Your statement will become part of your Equifax credit report and it will be included each time your credit report is uh, accessed, okay? You can add a statement to your Equifax credit report by mail or by phone. And you to add a consumer statement, you can send it in writing to the following address. We're gonna put this on the screen for you. So you have Equifax Information Services, ALC, PO Box, 740256, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, 30374-0256. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'll leave it on the screen here. And uh, please include a cover letter with your full name, current address, date of birth, and the, and the confirmation number associated with your dispute. This is what I told you earlier, the 10-digit confirmation code, okay? And uh, you can also call one 866 Three four nine five one nine one from eight a.m. to midnight Eastern, seven days a week, and a customer care agent can add your statement to your Equifax credit report, no problem. Okay, and you can edit or remove a consumer statement by writing to the above to the address that I gave you earlier. Again, the address is Equifax Information Services LLC, PO Box seventy four zero two five six, Atlanta, Georgia three zero three seven four dash zero two five six. Thank you so much for your attention, folks. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was talking to you about how to initiate an Equifax dispute process. And first, you want to check your report. Number two, you want to think like a lender. Number three, you want to file a dispute directly with the, with the company. Number four, please be specific. Number five, you need to have proof. Number six, be patient. And number seven, be um, just review the results. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.